Happy Thursday, thinkers and tinkers. As always, I'm Jen, and welcome back to Gravener's Public Library's Thinkers and Tinkers Lab Home Edition. Now, I'm with you every Tuesday and Thursday at 2 p.m. doing fun STEAM activities. So that's science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics activities that you can do at home. Today, we will once again be exploring the S in STEAM, which stands for science. We're gonna be investigating creepy crawlies. That's right, bugs and arachnids. Now, we're gonna cover four main topics. The first is the characteristics of arachnids and insects and what makes them different. The second is why are they important? Why do we need them? Why do we care about them at all? The third is how to safely and humanely capture insects and arachnids. The fourth is how to use scientific drawings and illustrations to actually draw the bugs that we catch. Are you ready to get started? Let's go. Let's begin by talking about insects. Some insects in your life that you might have seen outside or maybe even in your house that you're probably already familiar with include bees, ants, dragonflies, butterflies, beetles, mosquitoes, ladybugs, grasshoppers, and even earwigs. Now, unlike us, Insects are invertebrates, which means that they don't have a spine. Instead of having bones on the inside like we do, they have a hard shell, which is called an exoskeleton. It basically covers their whole body and provides them with protection and support. Insects have three segments to their body. They have their head, their thorax, and their abdomen. Insects also have antennae, and they have six legs. Most insects also have wings. Now, you might be saying, but Jen, what about spiders? You completely forgot spiders. Don't worry, I didn't forget. Spiders actually aren't insects. They belong to a different group called arachnids. Like insects, arachnids are invertebrates, which means they have no spine, and they have an exoskeleton. They're also cold-blooded. However, what makes them different is that they don't have antennae, they don't have wings. They have eight legs instead of six, and their body is broken into two sections. The first section combines their head and their thorax, and it's called the cephalothorax. The second section is their abdomen. Fun facts about some arachnids are that they can't chew like we can, which means that they have to break down their food before they can eat it, and they're nocturnal, which means that they come out at night. Some examples of arachnids that you might know are spiders, scorpions, daddy long legs, and ticks. All right, so why do we even care about insects and arachnids? What makes them so important and special? Let me break it down for you. Insects make up 84% of all animal life on Earth. And for every one person, there are up to 200 million insects. That's a lot of bugs. And as it turns out, that's a really good thing because insects are super important for our environment and its health. Let me give you some facts. Insects pollinate plants, including the fruits and vegetables that we eat, so they're important for our food supply. Insects are decomposers, which means they break down things like waste that would build up without them. Insects are also producers and make things that we need, like honey, beeswax, and silk. Insects eat a lot of pest populations. Pest populations are the plants, insects, or weeds that us humans find kind of annoying. Insects are super important to food webs and food chains. A lot of animals rely on insects for their food. So while we might find insects a little bit creepy and disgusting at times, it turns out that they're uniquely beautiful in their own way and incredibly important to life on Earth. That leads me to today's activity. Scientists believe that there are up to 10 million species of bugs out there that are still undiscovered. That's right, there are insects around town that we don't know about. So I challenge you to go out there and find some bugs. But before you do, let me give you some safety guidelines for safely and humanely handling insects. Firstly, don't touch or pick up bugs with your hands. 
use a small shovel, a container, a stick, or other tool. Second, don't keep bugs captive for more than a day and set them free outside after you're done examining them. Third, treat all bugs with kindness and respect. They are living things and we know how important and amazing they really are. They are way more scared of you than you are of them. So above all, be gentle. The tools you'll need for bug catching include some kind of container to keep them in. If you can get a container that you can poke holes in the top in, even better. You'll want a net or a shovel or a spoon or something to pick them up with to put them into the container. Lastly, you're gonna to wanna to put some kind of grass or leaves or pine needles in the bottom of your container to make it feel a little more homey for your bug. Now that you've caught your bug, it's time to study it. It's time to really examine it up close. You're gonna to wanna to try and identify your bug. So what kind is it? What features does it have? How many legs? Does it have antennae? Does it have wings? Does it have an abdomen? What does it look like? Really take some time to get to know your insect. I caught two different bugs. I caught a dock spider and I caught an ant. Now, I know I can't keep these guys forever, so the next step is to draw them. Scientific illustrations are the ways that scientists document new species or known species of bugs to tell and teach other people about them. Scientific illustrations have a lot of guidelines and rules, but since we're beginners, I'm gonna start with three basic characteristics. First, their accuracy. Your drawing should be as close to the real thing as possible. This includes the size of the insect, its proportions and colors. The second characteristic is communication. Your drawing should help whoever is looking at it to get a clear picture of the subject or animal, and it should tell them about the animal. The third characteristic is the aesthetics of your drawing. The way it looks, the beauty of it. The illustration should be visually appealing and pleasing. This captures the attention of the viewer and helps people to remember things about your drawing. These are some of my practice drawings. This is my ant, my spider, I have a moth, an inchworm, a bee, a dragonfly, and a little ladybug. These drawings took me hours, so don't worry if yours don't look exactly like mine on your first try. I had to do many drafts. All right, thinkers and jinkers, we did it. We learned about insects and arachnids. We learned why they're important. We discussed how to safely and humanely capture them what tools you're gonna to need for that, and the characteristics of scientific illustrations and how to share your discoveries with the world. I would love to see your drawings of your insects and arachnids. So don't forget to post a photo or a video of your own, comment on this video, like this video, and subscribe to our channel. As always, I'm here every Tuesday and Thursday with more STEAM activities. Thanks, Thinkers and Tinkers, and I'll see you next time.